Talking about sex can be awkward. Odds are that your doctor didn't bring it up and you might feel too uncomfortable to bring it up on your own. So I'm here to help you traverse this uncomfortable subject. Let's answer some of the most common questions I hear from survivors. Will sex cause another stroke? Good news, the chance of a stroke happening during sex is low. In terms of endurance, you can think of sex like walking up two flights of stairs versus running a marathon. But because everyone's situation is different, I still recommend asking your doctor if it's safe for you. Where do I start? Start with communication. As difficult as it may be, have a conversation with your partner about where your sex drive is at and what you feel comfortable doing. You may be over or under stimulated after stroke and both of those reactions are normal. Will I be able to perform normally? It's normal to have issues with performance after stroke. If you're having trouble with erectile dysfunction or achieving orgasm, this can be linked to several different things, including depression, medication, and feeling embarrassed about your body. I'm too depressed to want to have sex. You're not alone. Around a third of stroke survivors deal with depression. With regard to sex, start with cuddling and hugging, but without any expectation of sex. This will release the hormone oxytocin and can actually improve feelings of connection with your partner. And if you are depressed, establishing that level of connection with your partner is a great place to start in rebuilding intimacy. My medications are impacting my sex drive. Certain medications, including antidepressants, can lower sex drive. If you feel comfortable, have a conversation with your doctor about your options if you feel like medications are impacting your libido. Most importantly though, don't ever stop taking any medications unless your doctor tells you to. They may be very important for secondary stroke prevention. I feel embarrassed about my body. Getting to the finish line can be hampered when you're feeling embarrassed and frustrated by your body. And this is another point where communication is really important. Have that conversation with your partner and let them know how you're feeling about your body and what you might be embarrassed about. A supportive partner is really key in this process. They should help you feel more comfortable in your own skin and go at your pace. Will I still feel attractive? The way that we feel about ourselves is inherently an internal process. And unfortunately, I can't answer that question for you. But what I can say is that with time and effort, you can rebuild your confidence. How can I rebuild my confidence? One, know that you are worthy of love and have every right to enjoy sex. Two, laugh a little. Using humor can help you and your partner cope with some of the uncomfortable or unexpected situations that happen during sex. And three, take some time. Know that it may be a while before you feel comfortable with your body or with sex in general, and that's okay. How can I work around my impairments? Most of these workarounds are pretty uncomplicated, so let's get a little bit more specific. I'm hypersensitive to touch and sound. For hypersensitivity to sound, create a quiet, calming environment in your bedroom. Let your partner know not to make any unexpected or loud noises during sex. And for hypersensitivity to touch, make sure to let your partner know where it's okay to touch and what level of touch that you're comfortable with or that is pleasurable for you. I have numbness. If you experience difficulty feeling touch, show your partner where you can feel and the type of touch that feels best. I have trouble moving one side of my body. One-sided weakness is one of the most common side effects after a stroke. So use your unaffected side or your stronger side to engage during sex. Find positions that allow you to promote the use of your unaffected side, but also be aware if you're laying on your affected side, especially if you experience numbness. You don't wanna accidentally get your arm behind you or underneath you and not be able to feel it. I have aphasia. If you have trouble communicating through speech, 
Establish certain gestures, noises, or touches that can help your partner understand what feels good and what doesn't. Like with any of these, it may take time to establish this new level of communication, but you can still communicate what you want from your partner, even if you're not using words. I experience neurofatigue. Neurofatigue can be an extremely debilitating issue that makes you want to sleep or rest all of the time, but there are better days and worse days. Let your partner know when you're having a better day with higher energy levels and try to include sex on those days versus those low energy days, and also plan to have time to rest afterwards. I sometimes experience incontinence. Trouble with incontinence during sex can be frustrating and embarrassing, but there are a few things that you can do. Set yourself up on a toileting schedule. If this is something that's happening even outside of sex, Make plan to go to the bathroom every couple of hours to try to regulate your overactive bowels and bladder. Two, make yourself go to the bathroom just before you have sex. And three, which is more of a long-term fix, is to exercise. Just like we can experience arm or leg weakness after a stroke, pelvic and rectal muscles can become weak as well. So engaging and strengthening exercises for those muscles can be very helpful over time. I have cognitive issues. Trouble with short-term memory, attention, and concentration are some of the most common cognitive issues I see after stroke. As unsexy as it may seem, set a reminder to have sex. Leave your phone in a different room so that you're not getting distracted by notifications. And put on some soft music in the bedroom to help you be mindful of the moment. And if you are the partner of someone who's had a stroke, Always obtain consent for someone who has cognitive issues. Know that things won't be perfect at first. It's going to take time and experimentation to figure out what you and your partner are comfortable with. But don't let that stop you from trying. You deserve to enjoy sex just as much as anybody else does. All right, everyone, that's it for today. As always, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below if you would like to sign up for the email list, which gets you free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. And if you find value in what we do and you are able, please consider donating to Post Stroke, either via our PayPal or by becoming a Patreon member, where a monthly donation gets you access to cool perks like social media shoutouts and behind the scenes footage. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.